I am told that there has been a zero-hour drinking game where every time we criticize uh, tech bros for what they're doing to the economy and the political system, drink. Uh, I do not recommend that. Not good for the liver. But uh, our next guest uh, wears many hats and does many things. She's been on the show before a number of times. She's a friend of the program, and they have been involved. She and her partners have been involved in addressing the so-called sharing economy problems. There's a new situation in New York I wanted to talk with her about. Lauren Windsor is the executive director of American Family Voices. She is the executive producer of the political web show The Undercurrent, and she is a partner in Democracy Partners, which is a progressive political consulting firm. So first of all, Lauren, welcome back. Thanks, RJ. Good to have you back. Now, uh, so what's going on with New York City? You guys are involved in the sharing economy stuff. Uh, they seem to, Airbnb seems to be in, in the government's face there. What's going on? So um, just to give you some background about our involvement, um, sure. we have a campaign at American Family Voices called Airbnb Watch. It's a coalition of uh, groups that works on the affordable housing issue vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Airbnb. So uh, what you see is that uh, Airbnb and other short-term rental platforms are trying to uh, really evade regulations that you know other comparable businesses have to follow, uh, like the hotel industry. They're essentially running the same types of businesses, but um, you know, operating without that level of regulation and uh, you know not paying the same taxes and you know not facing the same accountability standards. And so it's causing uh, you know it's really exacerbating the affordable housing crisis in cities like New York. And it's a primary reason that uh, New York had uh, instituted a, a tougher STR, short-term rental uh, legislation, uh, a few years back in that, um, you know, it's illegal to um, rent out a, a, an apartment in New York for less than 30 days when the owner isn't present. And so what does that mean? If you're renting out an apartment with the owner not present, you know, you're essentially running a de facto hotel. Right. And you're taking housing stock off the market that would otherwise be available for long-term renters. Right. You know, I, I mean, there's so many dimensions to this. that I This is why I got, I actually got really excited when I saw that you guys were involved in the Airbnb issue because I really feel strongly about it. You know, you talk to people, even progressive people, and they say, generally progressive people, and they say, well, what's wrong with that? If I want to rent out my place short term, I should be able to. Well, exactly what you're talking about. Here in Washington, D.C., it's a huge problem because there are so many Airbnb units because it's a tourist place that is driving up housing costs. New York City, where it's just impossible to live as a middle class person anymore, uh, more or less, you know, it's, it's driving up cost because so many units are being used for Airbnb. And I've got to say, when I was living in Los Angeles, there were some Airbnb houses, and I'm sure this is true of apartments too. It sucks to be the neighbor of an Airbnb unit in most cases, especially if it's what the kind you're talking about under this regulation, the kind where the owner isn't there. So your next door, the apartment next to you or the house next to you is an Airbnb house. People party, they're, they're making noise until two in the morning and they leave trash on the street. In my case in Los Angeles, family street, people would rent houses for parties. People come tearing down the street drunk. People had kids and families. Uh, Treme in New Orleans, you know, neighborhood yeah. that became famous, has is, is got a terrible problem with this. So does even parts of the Ninth Ward in New Orleans. So, well, I, I should address your first point though about um, you know folks who say I should be able to rent out my own property. We don't have any problem with you know true home sharing. If, if you're talking about you know renting out your home, you know, in, in order to make some extra money to pay your rent, to to do whatever you want with the money, but it becomes an entirely different thing when you're basically finding a, a loophole to, you know, become a hotel entrepreneur um, at the expense of your neighbors. I mean, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to many, uh, many people impacted by this that, you know, what about their right to live in their apartment um, without having, you know, the constant shuffling of strangers in and out, you know, the, the loud parties next door, you know, um, it, these people aren't vetted um, in, 
frankly, you know, it can become a dangerous uh, a dangerous situation really quickly for for people that, you know, they're they're living in an apartment that is zoned residential. You know, zoning regulations have a place in our society. Right. It's not zoned for commercial activity. Would you, you know, think that you have the same right as a property owner to open up a bar in your house? Right. I, I, well, no, I think that's another great point. I mean, I think that regulations are there to protect consumers. So the other piece of it is the people themselves who are renting out the Airbnb. I try to avoid it. There have been times I've done it, okay? I, and one time when I did it, I got bed bugs and brought them home to my house. Now, that was an unfun way to spend $1,500 uh, and be uncomfortable. Well, if it had been a hotel, I would have had recourse, and hotels are subject to inspections and things like Airbnb does. When we went to the Democratic Convention, covered the Democratic Convention, we did an Airbnb cockroaches. Well, hotels don't, you know, they, they check. So, so the other thing is, is that uh, Airbnb units, like everybody else, that's providing a service to the public, regulations are there to keep us healthy and safe, right? It, yeah, I actually um, had contact with um, someone on Airbnb uh, that had used a service in uh, in like Destin, in one of these Florida beach cities. And, you know, he's going on vacation, he's rented out this um, apartment, and he gets bed bugs. And, you know, like pretty soon into the vacation, and, you know, he's got to get rid of all of his stuff and go to a different hotel. And, you know, the amount of money that was reimbursed to him from Airbnb was, you know, nothing compared to what he then had to spend to replace all of his stuff and then book a new hotel last minute. Yeah, I think I got $250 or something like that. And uh, and this was like everything in my house had to be, yeah. you know. Uh, so uh, to talk to New uh, about New York, um, you know, one of the major issues with Airbnb is that they are just not transparent. They don't want to share data about their hosts. And, you know, go figure why they would want to not share data about their hosts because, you know, there's estimates of 30, 40% and up of their business is dependent upon these, you know, uh, entrepreneurial types that are running their own hotel, like de facto hotel chains. I mean, I've gone in and done research and I was shocked to see that, you know, you had people running like 30 listings, 40 listings, you know, at what right. point is it too much? Like, I think it's fine for you to rent out your own house, but if you're, you know, this is now your profession and you're running 40 different properties, we're not talking about home sharing. We're right. talking about running a hotel and getting around the regulations to do it. And so Airbnb is not willing to share its data with cities. I don't know of any other business that uh, gets that kind of preferential treatment with, you know, uh, how they interact, you know, right. with, with sharing data, with, with like being regulated by municipalities. Well, the comptroller of New York City puts out this report last week and estimates that, you know, Airbnb is responsible for, you know, 10 percent of the rise, uh, rise in uh, rental rates. Mm -hmm. And so... Airbnb just goes like loses it and they've really been attacking Scott Stringer and you know saying your data is faulty you've been you know using some um, you know faulty data source uh, that is uh, you know funded or underwritten by the hotel industry and it's like you know people are gonna try to come to this data if you're not going to provide the, the the data that you have like if you want to say that other people's data on your platform is inaccurate you're going to have to release your own data this is what all these guys <laughs> do though this is what i mean by tech bros is uh they all did well, uber did that to build a blasio in new york city they they put a little thing in the app that you would send an email to build a blasio say yeah, they all hoard their data they release it selectively uh or they hire consultants to manipulate it and play with it and uh, they don't let you have it. So uh, Scott Stringer is the, the controller in New York City. Uh, I say, well, let New York City pass a law demanding the data or you can't operate in New York City. That's what I'd do. I mean, I would hope that that's uh, the conclusion that he would come to. And um, But there's been a real reluctance on the part of uh, most cities to even just enact simple laws. I mean, Airbnb has... Um, been successful in delaying legislation in Los Angeles, in D.C., in Boston. All of these cities have been facing, uh, you know, affordable housing crises. And, uh, you know, 
it just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And, you know, that's their ultimate goal is to not be under any regulatory regime, right? So, right. you know, and, that's a win for them. <laughs> and to bully, I mean, in a sense, there's an ideology here, too. They want to bully politicians with their money, like any corporate, mm -hmm. you know, predators do. And they also, I think, they're in the Silicon Valley, there's this libertarian ethos that says regulation shouldn't even exist and we're here to destroy it and if we just ha accidentally become billionaires in the process well i can't help it if i'm lucky so where can people go to find out about what you guys are doing about this and maybe uh lend their voices to this uh folks can go to uh, airbnbwatch.org um, and you can find out how to plug in. And um, I, I would encourage people to get on Twitter, though, and you know, show support for Scott Stringer and uh, other folks. Like they, they haven't just done this in New York uh, in terms of the bullying of public officials. They also did this in Boston uh, with Councilwoman Wu. But you know, uh, join in some of these Twitter debates and you know, hit back and say, no, you know, this guy's only doing uh, what he's mandated to do in his job, which is to, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go work ahead. on work on behalf yeah. of the people of New York City, and not on the behalf of of you know corporations, a thirty billion dollar corporation that's trying to pad its profits at the expense of everyday New Yorkers who can no lo longer afford to live in the city. So, is there a hashtag, or sh do we have to make one up? Well, no. The hashtag that's uh, been used in New York City is hashtag release the data. Uh huh. So, uh, you know, Scott Stringer put out a. a a press release saying, you know, Airbnb cannot have it both ways. You can't refuse to release your data on your hosts and then, you know, criticize uh, reports based on outside data. Like, yeah, give us the data, release the data. Yeah, all right. But well, we also good. use the hashtag uh, unfair BNB because you know Un unfair BNB. I like that. That's yeah, good. That's good. I was thinking of something with Airbnb and an F. That wasn't it, yeah. but that's a good too. Unfair B and B. So okay, Lauren Windsor, Executive Director of American Family Voices, and so much more. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming back, and thanks for being uh, uh, all over this issue. We really appreciate it. Thank you, RJ.